Hi, it's Lucas Michaelitis here, and welcome to Digital Pill. Today, I'd like to explore some ideas based on triads and how we can use these in a, an effective soloing and comping kind of uh, environment. Before I, I discuss how to do this, I'd like to demonstrate some, some of the sounds generated using these concepts. So I've got a simple chord progression going D to G to A, and that's the 1, 4, and 5 of D major. And I'm going to start using all sorts of different triads, triads just to generate some different colours. I'll, as I say, I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. So I've got a little loop going on, a little bass. Here we go. Hopefully you would have seen that kind of triadic, <coughs> excuse me, triadic movement, the inversion of triads. So uh, let's ex let's have a quick look at how we do invert triads. So if we're in the key of C, I start with a one, three, and the five of C major. That's what we call a C major triad, and that's in root position because the root is in the lowest position. In order to invert that, what we do is take that C up an octave. That's what we call a first inversion. The third of the chord is now occupying the lowest position. And then if I go up another inversion from there, we take the E up, and we get a second inversion triad. That's got the G in the last position. If we take that G up, we're back to root position. That's all C major. Now I can do that with all triads, and there are four in total. There's major, minor, augmented, and diminished. So in order to generate the minor triad, we just flatten the third. And then we do exactly the same thing. And then to generate the diminished, we flatten the fifth as well as the third. That's a little bit more dissonant, a little harder to play, but with a bit of practice, I'm sure you get it. Finally, the augmented triad. Once that's been achieved, we can then move on to the first inversion from the sixth string, which is the twelfth fret, and do exactly the same thing. There's a C major, flatten the third, there's our C minor, and then diminished, flat fifth, and augmented. For those who are keen fret watchers, you would have probably noticed that that was the same as this. Exactly the same shape, exactly the same uh, intervallic relationship. Augmented triads are built on major third intervals. That means they're symmetrical. And that means if I moved up another major third, we would also get the same group of notes. So really, that chord is a C augmented, a G sharp augmented, and an E augmented. And we can also play these from the second inversion. C major, C minor, C diminished, and finally the augmented which we've already seen. So that is C major triad, C minor, C augmented, and C diminished in three positions from the root, from the first inversion, and the second inversion. So back to that chord progression we had, that was the D, G, A. What I was doing is substituting a few triads over those existing chords. So for the original one, the first bar, I was working with D triad, second bar of D, 
I was playing an F-sharp diminished. Subtle difference. That turns it into a D seventh chord. And then I play on the G chord an E minor triad. Makes it a G six. Oops. Gives it a sort of a sweet sound. And then on the A chord, I'll turn it into an A augmented chord. Gives it a bit more bite and uh, it has a kind of desire to resolve back to the D. So let's put this into action again. We have a D, F sharp diminished, E minor, and to A augmented. Let's add a second inversion. So E minor and A augmented. Third inversion. And then you can do a next position, same thing. E minor, A augmented. Notice the smooth voice leading. And then another position we can go up. That's all inversions. And then I can just mess around a bit. Here we go, this is the fun part. E minor, A augmented. I can try single notes. E minor, augmented. D, F sharp, E minor. I can even try playing two notes together. So from my experience of working with these triads, uh, I, I've realized that there are quite a lot of benefits associated. One of the main things that I love is that, uh, as we've, we've already mentioned, there's only four of them. So it's, it's, it's quite manageable, a task. It's not like an infinite possibility of chords. It's just four triads, major, minor, augmented, and diminished. That appeals to me, the fact that I can just grab onto four triads and make lots of potential music out of that. The other uh, lovely thing is that there are only three notes at a time. So that gives us a flexibility. Uh, in some ways, it sort of reminds me of, of how a piano player approaches comping. You know, you can imagine a piano player inverting chords like that kind of thing. You know, you can almost hear how a piano player works in, in using inversions. So I like the fact it's only three notes, it makes us flexible. It means we can move around, we're not confined to one space. And in that regard too, it's ideal when accompanying because uh, say you're accompanying a singer or a saxophonist perhaps, um, what will happen is that you don't have to be in the way. You can find a place, a sonic register, where you allow plenty of space for the soloist or the singer to do their thing without getting in the way, but, but also providing the essential amount of information required for them to have a sense of the harmony. I, I also noticed that it works well in a band setting when, you know, say you're working with a keyboard player and maybe a, a bass player or whoever, uh, it's sometimes hard to find your place on the guitar and it might be about finding the right register or right inversion or right position. If you've got all of these under your fingertips or available, it makes life a lot more, more easy, I guess. I love playing with these triads. I've detailed all this information on a PDF and that's available online at digitalpill.tv. Thank you.